But there's also a great book called Vestigial Organs Are Fully Functional by Dr. Bergman and Dr. Howe, which you can also check out. All right, guys. Take it away. Wow. Cool. Thank you, Venom Bang, for hooking us up. The claim that vestigial organs are fully functional is not all false. Certain structures that creationists mention are in fact functional. The tailbone, for example, does serve as an anchor for vital muscles. Granted, they never actually tell you what muscle or show you where it's connected, so it's pretty hard to believe. You might want to do that next time, guys. Furthermore, the appendix has been shown to have some function in the immune system. Even the anal spurs on snakes, which are vestigial legs that look just like a single claw, do have function. They're used for grasping other snakes and for combat in males. However, there are some structures that are truly vestigial. For example, the eyes of cavefish. Now, cavefish normally live in complete darkness and have no use for their eyes. As such, the eye is disfigured and non-functional. The question is, why do they have this disfigured eye if it's completely useless? Furthermore, there's a species of bird that lives in the Galapagos called the blue-footed booby. In order to get food, it dives into the water. As such, it has no external nostrils, but instead breathes out of the corners of its mouth. Now the interesting thing is not that it doesn't have nostrils, but that below at the surface of the beak, where the nostrils are sealed off, it has all the structures of a nasal cavity. Why would this be? These structures beneath the beak serve no purpose, so why are they there? And by the way, don't go running to Answers in Genesis. They have a thing on the blue-footed booby, and they've completely ignored the nasal structures. So how can we explain these seemingly useless structures? Well, one is that the designer, or God, is really testing our faith, which I addressed in a previous video demonstrating that that could not be the case. Another explanation is that random mutation yielded these structures, which of course no creationist would argue. Furthermore, no scientist would argue that they formed from random mutation because there's no natural selection working on them to shape them to look like an eye or a nasal structure. Another explanation is that these structures could have other functions, and it's true that they may have some other function that we don't know about, but the possibility of something being true is not indicative of that thing being true. Therefore, we must conclude that they do in fact have no function. Show a scientist what the function is, and they'll gladly take back the idea that this is vestigial. But as it stands, the eyes of cavefish and the nasal structures of the blue-footed booby have no function. The only other explanation is, da 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 evolution! Which I've demonstrated in a previous video addressing the idea that evolution is religious, is completely possible. So now we're back to square one, and the question remains, why do these structures exist if not for evolution?